Welcome to the second chapter of this course. We now know the basics of UiPath Studio and have seen a preview of the possibilities that the tool provides to us. In this chapter, we focus purely on how to integrate UiPath with SAP. But before we can start building workflows for SAP, there is one thing we need to take care of from the SAP system settings side. We need to make sure that SAP GUI scripting is enabled on your system. GUI scripting is a standard SAP functionality that works as an automation interface for running scripts in SAP. GUI scripting allows UiPath to individually recognize various icons, fields, menus, and other user interface elements in SAP. With scripting disabled, most transactions and menus in SAP are recognized only as single blocks. It is possible to use UiPath to automate SAP-related processes even if GUI scripting would be disabled, but this will make an automation considerably more slow and cumbersome. When we start automating various transactions, you will understand exactly what I mean with all this. From a security point of view, SAP servers see no difference between scripted users and human users. The same access and authorization rules apply to both robot and human users. SAP GUI scripting needs to be enabled from both the server side and from the client side. Let's first check how to make sure that scripting is enabled from the server side. First, you need to go to transaction RZ11, which is used to maintain profile parameters. Insert SAP GUI user scripting as the parameter name and press display. If the current value visible here is true, it means that scripting is enabled from the server side. The value can be changed using the button available here. Next, let's check how to enable scripting from the client side. On the toolbar, go to the Customize Local Layout button and then select Options from the drop-down list. Under Accessibility and Scripting, you can find Scripting submenu. Here, make sure that Enable Scripting has been activated. After you have made sure that scripting is enabled, we can start creating our first automated workflow for SAP. In this lesson, we will finally start examining how to automate workflows involving SAP. In general, automating SAP using UiPath is pretty much the same as building workflows for any other application. However, there are some SAP-specific automation issues that require some special attention. During this chapter, I will be highlighting some important tricks and workarounds that are critical for you to know. We will start exploring SAP automation with a very simple example. In this lesson, we will create a workflow that logs into SAP and runs and exports a standard report. I will be using a standard account receivables report S underscore ALR underscore 870-12197 as the example report I want to extract. You don't need to use this exact same report yourself, but you can select any report you wish. Without further delay, let's start building the workflow. I start by opening SAP GUI logon window. Before we can build a process that logs into the system, we need to understand how UiPath is recognizing the SAP logon screen and how this window is divided into different selectable elements. Let's assume that the environment we want to log into is not added as a favorite connection. This means that we first need to click Connections to show all available environments we have available. Let's try to record a click to this Connections folder icon and see what happens. I have created a new blank project to be used for this workflow. Before we start recording, let's add a flowchart to our work area. I will then select the basic recording type and try to record a click to the connections icon using automatic recording. We can see that the blue element box covers this whole area here and the individual folder icons are not separated into their own boxes. This means that we can't use automatic recording to record a click to this icon. To solve this problem, we need to use manual recording instead of automatic recording. As I mentioned in the first chapter of this course, automatic recording can only be used for clicks and typing text. And even with clicking, 
recording only understands single left clicks and not right clicks or double clicks. Every other action needs to be done using manual recording. Actions that require manual recording include selecting text, copying text to clipboard, inserting text from clipboard, finding text or images, or using modifier keys like Shift or Alt. Manual recording is done using these tools available in the recording toolbar. I want to highlight that for all these manual recording tools, there exists a corresponding activity that you can select from the activities window. So just like with automatic recording, all the actions you perform using manual recording will be converted into activity boxes after you have finished your recording. The main benefit of manual recording is that you can temporarily stop automatic recording, use manual recording tools to perform actions that can't be automatically recorded, and then continue your auto recording again. This will often save you a lot of time when you don't need to exit recording to manually add activities into your workflow. Let's see how we can record the Click to Connections icon using manual recording. I will use the Click UI Element action that allows us to click to a specific location within an element that UiPath recognizes. Within this pane, the Connections icon has a fixed place, being always the third icon on the list. This means that we can use fixed coordinates for the click within the pane. I will use the Click UI Element action to click the Connections menu and then save and exit the recording. The click was converted into this activity here. Under Activity Properties, let's expand the fields available under the Cursor Position field. These coordinates here represent the location of the click within the target UI element. The position field has a value, top left, which means that the top left corner of the element is used as the starting point when the coordinates are assigned. It would be possible for you to freely change these coordinates if needed. The UI element targeted by this activity can be examined from the selector field. You can press this button here to open the selector editor. Here you can see the name of the target application and the title of the correct window within the application. You can also see the name of the specific UI element that includes the connections icon. Let's try our workflow again. As you can see, the click is working correctly. The next step is to select the correct environment from the list of connections. This time, the place where our connection is located on the list is not fixed, so we can't use the previous technique to select a fixed location within a UI element. This allows me to demonstrate the character recognition functionality of UiPath Studio. UiPath can scan all text available in a certain window, and we can then instruct our workflow to click certain text. This can be done by using Click Text activity that is available in the Recorder toolbar. I first click Text, then Mouse, and then Double Click. After this, I select the element I wish UiPath to scan. A new window pops up that shows us the results of the screen scraping. This screen scraping wizard includes all text that the scraper was able to identify inside the element we selected. If some of the text from the element is missing from here, it means that UiPath was not able to scan that part of the text properly. This field here is used to determine which text should our workflow to click at. I will write the name of the environment I'm using to the field. It is not necessary to enter the whole name of the environment, but you can just insert a part of the name. You can also copy and paste text from scraping results. After selecting the text you want to interact with, just press Continue and this action is ready. Let's check how our workflow is working so far. I press Save and Exit, connect the new activity with our previous one, and run the workflow. The correct SAP environment is selected, so the workflow is working properly so far. 
Let's examine the settings for the click text activity a little bit more. I open the recording toolbar and select text and click again. Here you can see that the scraper is using the native method for scanning the text. The native method scans text with 100% accuracy from applications that are built to render text with the graphics device interface. However, with some apps, the native method does not work and you need to use the OCR method. OCR is not 100% accurate, but it works usually very well, for example with Citrix which is not compatible with the native method. You can probably guess what is the function of this occurrence field here. If the same text is repeated many times inside an element, this counter allows you to choose which instance is the correct one. This text click can be used to instantly test if the action works properly. Next, it's time for our workflow to log in to SAP. The user and password fields are both recognized in a normal way, so we can use automatic recording to insert text into these fields. I will first click the username field and enter the username of our robot. I check the empty field checkbox and then press enter. After we have entered the password, we want our workflow to hit enter to complete the login. To do this, we can select Enter from the list of special characters to be pressed after password has been inserted. Let's pause and save our recording and quickly test that the login will work. Remember to link all the activities together before running the workflow. Great! Everything seems to be working correctly. The next step is to run our report. The example report I'm using for this workflow is a standard account receivables report S underscore ALR underscore 870-12197. As you know, SAP reports can be opened by typing their name into the command field. We could just record the typing of the name, but let's use a variable for this so we can examine a little bit more how variables can be utilized. I will create a new variable called report name. We can keep string as the variable type. Next, I will drag a new activity called input dialog to our flowchart. As the name implies, an input dialog can be used to get input from a human user. Let's check the properties of this activity. We can use this label field to insert some instructions that will appear inside the input dialog. We can also give a title for the dialog box. Remember that all text strings need to be inserted in quotations. On the result field, let's insert the name of the variable we just created. Just write the first letters of the variable and the variable is automatically proposed to be selected. If a variable is used in the result field, the value of the variable is updated based on the input made by the user. Let's quickly check what the input dialog looks like. I set this activity as the starting node and run the workflow. As you can see, input dialog just shows an empty field into which a user can type text. Whatever is written here will become the value of our report name variable. Using the variable in our workflow is simple. Let's drag type into activity to our flowchart. We can use this activity to insert the value of a variable to the SAP command field. Let's double click this activity to check its properties. We can enter the name of our variable here, and whatever is the current value of our variable will be typed by the workflow. I will also add enter as a special key at the end.
When we are using the type into activity, we also need to indicate on the screen where the text we want to insert should be typed. This is done by clicking this Indicate on Screen text here. A familiar type of UI element selector opens up. As you can see, the SAP command field is recognized as its own element. Let's click the command field to indicate it as the elements where we want to insert text. Our workflow can now log in to the correct SAP environment and open the report that has been specified by a user. Let's take a small break and continue building the workflow in the next lesson.